Hello, experienced tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Shining Force CD with me, Blue Ankylo. We're in book one of the, the Shining Force CD game, of course, and we are about to show off some leveling, and then I'll probably go back to Battle 19 and try to clear that up a little bit quickly. So kind of like last episode, except we are all prepared for the end game. So let's have a little look at what we've got. So... To answer the question, what level did you get to? Well, I got to level 12. Uh, basically, I found that the respawning Durahans could get you to level 12 very easily. Like, at level 11, I generally still got 40 to 50 experience per kill, which means basically two kills most of the time, and we would get from level 11 to 12. And then it seemed like at 12, it started to slow down, although I'm sure you could have gotten to level 13 or 14 if you really felt like it. I didn't want to over-level, so 12 I felt was pretty fair. It would have been pretty easy to get everyone to 12. So I did, except Amigo, because I like Amigo, but I'm not going to use Amigo. I don't need that many healers. Amigo has pretty terrible stats overall. And although Aura is a great spell, um, I just I don't want another healer. <laughs> I, I'm not a huge fan of healers generally. Like, Boost and Aura and Blast, like, it's a good healer, don't get me wrong, but... I just, I didn't want another one. So, sorry, Ami uh, sorry Amigo, you're, you're getting benched. So let's, uh, let's talk about some options. You can tell, sort of by the swords, the party that I'm going to use for the end game here. Uh, so significant changes are I cut shade, because I didn't really want two archers. This is debatable, but uh, maybe we should have brought Sig, or shade, I don't know. Sig had no chance, he's out. Um, I still have two mages, uh, three if you count Domingo. That might have been questionable as well, like it might be better to bench either Wendy or uh, Yisha. Um, especially Yisha with only Blaze 3, like her spells, well, actually no, she learned Bolt 2 at level 11 or 12. So suddenly she's got a great area of effect spell that helps her out a lot. Uh, Wendy though, she needs Freeze 3 or else I don't know what I'm gonna do with her. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Domingo is the, the champion of magic though. Freeze 3, Blaze 3, Bolt 2, um, and a fair amount of MP. He's been real good. And uh, so then we're not bringing Gates, we're not bringing Shriek, uh, we're not bringing Randolph. I might be bringing Kashing more because I like having two Paladins more than the alternatives of who I could have brought. I could have brought either, instead of Kashing, I could have brought Shade, which is good, but I don't know. I mean, I kind of like having Paladins. They're a bit more defensive than an Archer, and they move further. Uh, I also could have brought Shriek or the other Paladin, but I feel like there wasn't too many options. It was basically... Bench Kashing or Gaian and bring or or like one of the mages. Like there's just there's not that many extra characters. It's not like Shining Force 2 where you've got like double like you could have two full teams basically. So anyway, I, I think let's just talk about some of the stats and then we'll get to the battle. So let's go over the paladins first. Now, just to keep things fair, we only have chrome lances equipped and no rings. So uh, we're not equipping the Valkyrie or anything just yet, so that it's fair. So they're all level 12. I don't think I gave any of these guys additional drinks. Um, and you can see that basically Apis is way better than any of Kashing Ran or Randolph. Um, I don't know if there's any downside to using Apis. I think because of the level 20 promotion, uh, we've got the best in all stats on Apis. 59 HP, 70 attack, 52 defense, 23 agility. The closest is Kashing, and he's not that close. So um, that was pretty much a, a shoe-in for Apis. I've liked Apis the whole game. Uh, and then the, basically if I want to bring a second one, it just came down to Kashing versus Randolph. And the big difference is defense. So Kashing's got eight more defense uh, and also more HP. So, so Kashing is just more survivable. He did get some fairly good level ups on the way to 12. And also in case you're wondering, I think after level 10, the level ups slow down significantly. So like the first... 5 to 10 levels are when you get most of your stats, and then after that it definitely looked like it was slowing down. So anyway, that's why Kashing is in and Randolph is out. Next up, the birds, because they're right here. Look at look at Shriek's defense, 28. Then look at Claude's, 40. And look at everybody else's. Uh, I did kind of want to bring uh, Shriek, like I had that extra running ring. I was thinking of putting the running ring on Shriek giving another 8-movement bird, like two 8-movement birds would have been pretty awesome. But Shriek's attack isn't that great, and her, or his, whatever, defense is terrible. 
So I felt like it's just not worth having a, a glass cannon bird. The flying is great as a movement type. Like, don't get me wrong, the flying is great uh, in these kinds of games. But uh, 28 defense on a on a melee one range fighter, uh, not so much. So Shriek got cut. Uh, let's talk about gates. Oh, and, and just in case you're wondering, yes, like Claude has continued to be amazing. That's with the broadsword equipped, 80 attack, 40 defense. Like, Claude is not the most tanky character, but 40 is still enough. Um, Blue has 61, but that's plus 10 from the white ring. Uh, so, but still, I have 51. You know, the bird's 10 below that, and then no white ring. Um, okay, so that covers knights and birds. Uh, let's talk about... Oh, yeah, warriors right here, yeah. So, Gates, I was hoping would be kind of cool. He was not cool. Uh, pretty much the lowest HP on the force, not counting, like, a healer that's not even leveled up. So terrible HP, which is really bad for enemies that have defense piercing attacks, like all those chimeras and wyverns and stuff. And I'm sure there are lots of late late game enemies. So I think Gates is trash. And then 62 attack, 48 defense, compared to, say, Roos, it's not... Well, it's actually pretty close, to be fair. Uh, I did give Roos the quick ring, so consider that five more agility. But the main difference is Roos has so much more HP. Um... If it wasn't for the HP, uh, Gates might have a chance. But 71 attack, 49 defense. You know, it's pretty close in terms of... Uh, no, it's not. It's Defense is similar. So Gates is like 20-some HP behind and 10 attack power behind. Never mind. The only thing he's got is defense, and it's not even that great. Okay, Gates, you got cut. Alright, what's next? Um, let's talk mages. I guess just I sort of did already. Domingo learned Bolt 2 at some point. I didn't keep track of the levels. And uh, I did want to keep the Protect Ring on him, because at least in Shining Force 1, enemies tended to attack Domingo, so having his defense high seemed smart. Also, he can't equip a weapon, and what I finally did, took me a while, but I put a, uh, a Protect Staff on all my wizards, so they get plus 2 defense from the Protect Staff. I could equip the Demon Rod if I want, but it's more important to have that flat defense bonus. So that's where Yisha gets a little bit of defense. Uh, Mayfair has the option of regeneration or a little bit more defense, depending on what she wants. And uh, Wendy has the defense as well from the Protect Staff. Although the Evil Ring, I need to go repair that. Good thing I checked. <laughs> anyway, the Wizards are not so much defined by their stats, but by their spells. And we already talked about that. So they need Blaze 4 before the end of the game, or Freeze 4, or at least Freeze 3 for me to like them. And I don't know when they're going to learn those spells. So it's hard to say. Um... They're all okay, but as enemies get more HP and resist ice and fire more often, it's probably not... Like, I would suggest maybe not bringing three spellcasters, but I like them, and, you know, so I'm gonna bring them, I guess. It's my game. So, Gaian. This is a, an interesting, unique character for this game. Kind of like Xylo, kind... Well, slower movement than Xylo. I guess he's more like uh, Gerhalt from uh, Shining Force 2 with bad movement. Um, so I gave him the running ring, so we're going to equip that on him to give him 7 movement, which should keep him up to the speed. I could have also given that to, um, I was thinking of leaving that on, uh, Roos, because uh, Roos could use the movement as well. But Roos gets a range 2, blaze 2 attack with heat axe, which gives him some chance, and I wanted him to have the quick ring. So, um, I decided you can't have two rings equipped. Gaian is a little bit quicker agility-wise, so I'll give him the plus two movement, and that'll help balance him out. He does have a lot of defense. Uh, his attack power is not great. He would be a good candidate for the power ring, which I will eventually give to Kashing, because Kashing doesn't quite do enough damage by default here. Uh, but the power ring will bring Kashing up to, to par. And then Gaian will have the running ring, so he can hopefully keep up. And if there are mountains or forts, he will be really good. Uh, I think if... Shriek was better, or Randolph was better, they might have replaced him, because they have better movement ranges and types. But um, they didn't, and he's got all the defense and decent enough attack, so yeah, okay. It took him a long time though, this is definitely a slow burn. Um, his, his attack growth was not really high enough, and it took him a long time to get to where he is today. And he's still not the strongest character. Other than that, Mayfair, she learned heal 4 at some point. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I think I think she'll learn Aura 3 and 4 at some point, but it might just take too much grinding. Aura 4 would be awesome, but I think it's just too high of a level requirement. Uh, and then Stock versus Shade. So they actually ended up almost identical. I didn't buy a spare uh, old shot just to compare them, but 
The Buster Shot is 3 more damage than the other weapon. So think of stock at 65 attack, 34 defense. And then look here. So same attack power identically, HP very close. And, or actually no, I guess stock has a bit less HP. So that's a downside for stock. But he's got a bit more defense. So I don't know if that's how they'll always turn out, but they seemed very similar. And they're okay. They're probably some of the better archers in Shining Force. I'm still not a huge, huge fan, especially if I could get mages with range 3 magic. But all things considered, I'm definitely going to bring one to the end game, just not two like I used to. So that's a change. Kray, um, well, he hits really hard. That's his main thing. 78 attack power. Heals. Decent enough heals. Boost spell got to level 2, which maybe will show off. And uh, also, like, a surprising amount of defense. I didn't expect Kray to get this tanky. His tankiness is as good as Apis's. So I highly recommend Kray, no doubt about it. He's the best monk. I know there's only two monks, but Sig's thing is defense, and he only has three more defense. So all he's really got is HP. Eh, I don't know if 15 HP is worth that much, but same MP, way less attack power, a little bit, little bit less defense on Kray, and a little bit slower agility. But I'll take this stat over Sig's any day. Also, I like Kray's spell selection better. Heal and boost are pretty good. Uh, Dispel is not very useful, and Detox is generally not worth a slot. So I think that's everybody. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my, my party composition. Um, I have a couple things we need to do before we start the battle again, just because I'll forget. I need to repair that ring, and I need to equip a couple extra things that I forgot about. So we're not equipping the evil ring at the moment. We can always do that if we want. But uh, I think you can use it without equipping it anyway, I, I think. You just have to be a class that can equip it. Uh, we definitely want to equip this Valkyrie over the Chrome Lance. And one of the reasons I wanted two Paladins was because I had two ultimate weapons. And the Valkyrie and the Halberd don't really stack very well. Because if you've got the Valkyrie, it does more damage at more range. So you're only holding on the, to the Halberd for its magical properties. So I felt like that was kind of a waste. Um... What else was I going to Oh, we got this, this Dark Sword, right? So, I'm sure it's cursed. I'm not going to default to having it equipped. But uh, that puts Cloud... The Both the birds and the hero can equip the Dark Sword. So if you want to nearly break the 99 damage cap, Claude can probably do that in a couple more level ups. And if you equipped him with a Power Ring right now, he'd already be there. So there's that. You could go 99 attack with a Power Ring. But uh, I'm going to leave him with the broadsword for now and then kind of go with the dark sword. I was also really considering going, um, oops. Uh, if I pass that dark sword down to Screech, or Shriek, whatever, Screech and Shriek, the two terrible birds. Um, I think it would have actually given Shriek a good amount of attack power. Like it's, uh, I'll just show you why not. We're, we're having a slow end, we're having a slow episode today. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy learning a little bit about the background background stats. So if I had given it to Shriek almost 80 attack power, that would have brought two birds to around 80 attack. And that would have been pretty great. Or I could have put it on my hero and had also pretty good attack. But um, yeah, I just felt like if if Shriek had better defense, I would have done that. But with, with low defense, probably not worth it. Alright, what else is there? A couple more things to equip. Don't forget to repair your ring, Blue. Don't forget to repair your ring. All right, so we were at Claude. We're just holding on to the Dark Sword. We got the best archer weapon. We got the Holy Staff. We're actually going to equip the Protect Ring to start, and then we can regen later if we take damage. Um, we got the Demon Rod in case we want uh, a certain special attack. I want to equip this Running Ring. I uh, see. I always forget this kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to equip the Halberd. Is always better than the Chrome Lance. I might even buy a Power Spear just for a regular range to attack there. And, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's all the that's all the equipment we need to do. Okay, a couple things at the shop, and then we'll get to work. I promise. Only 15 minutes in. Alright, first off, clear some inventory, because there's still going to be drops. We know, for instance, that the boss of the current map has a Gaia Axe, or Atlas Axe, or some kind of axe. It's an axe, and I would like it. Uh, what am I trying to do here? Oh, no, you can have all that stuff. That's fine. I want to make sure we've got, like, an inventory space open. That's all I'm thinking. Alright, so the Valkyrie is always better than the Chrome Lance. There's no reason for that. And... That's it. Okay. So now we 
check the deals. There's never any deals. And we repair that evil ring. I thought I meant to repair everything. I must have just mixed it. I, I meant to, to, to keep everything repaired before the episode started, but I probably just didn't notice. And then uh, I think all that I'm missing is... Oh! It turns out you can't buy power spears. So don't sell your power spears, guys. I should never have done that. That happened to me in Shining Force 1 as well. Um, so that's a downside for, for having multiple paladins. If you if you have the Valkyrie, that's one upgraded power spear. But if you only if you sell the other power spear, then you can't really have two long range paladins. So that's something in favor of maybe the archers a little bit because I accidentally sold that. Oh well. Maybe we'll find another shop later on. Ha ha ha. Okay, so we're gonna go through this level pretty quickly this time, and I'll just basically be showing off our awesome stats now that we're a little bit leveled up because. There shouldn't be too much that can harm us with our current setup. So I'm not going to like super play stupidly, but uh, I'm also not going to mess around a whole lot here. Also, it's interesting which walls you can fly over because some walls can be flown over in case you're wondering. Hey, it's a Domingo. It's a me, Domingo. But yeah, this this map I do also quite like for the grind. Like, it was quite nice to just have a every turn respawning um, Durahan on both sides. Like, two enemies spawning per round, basically. Made the grind. Like, I, I probably didn't spend that long, actually. Like, you know, it was... Uh, I would definitely recommend it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> if you're playing along and you're having a hard time or something, or just want to get some levels, just go kill those two Dullahans in the corner. Over and over again. They don't hit all that hard. It's a little bit hard to level up like your uh, your healers and your mages because your mages run out of MP. But um... oh, look at this Apis! One damage. Now the golems were never very strong, but uh, you know, I yeah. <laughs> like I said, the real threat will be magic and um, enemies with uh, piercing attacks. So, you know, Freeze 3 is still going to hurt a bit. This is why having more HP is often good, because defense doesn't mean anything to magic. And all you need is higher HP totals. Alright, Yisha, what you got for me? Well, we could burn through a lot of MP. Nah, let's not be silly. The, um, the golems are weak to fire. This will do, like, nearly 20 damage, I think. Maybe, maybe they're not. I thought they took bonus damage from fire. Maybe I was wrong. Anyway, Blue's got this. I could have just lightning bolted them too, I suppose, but... Yeah. So, golems aren't worth a whole lot of experience, obviously. But you could see, we'll probably still get some level ups here accidentally, because, um... Sure, whatever. Um... Because, uh, even at level 12, the enemies are still giving us some decent experience. And I'm willing to bet that the Chimeras and uh, Wyverns actually give more experience than the Dullahans. So if you wanted to grind those, you could probably get even higher. Alright, we're definitely not casting Heal 4. That's a... that's a trap. 20 MP, range 1, but full healing. It's very rarely the right spell to cast. Unless you have an emergency situation where someone's at really low HP and you want to heal like 60 in a row. But still, like I said, very rarely the right choice. Alright, Roos, getting on in there. Big hits, good stuff. No experience. Well, the Demon Masters have been around for a while. So, okay, here's your lesson. You cannot fly over the front wall, but you can fly over the rear walls. Although I think... Even on a bird, it might take more... No, it's the same. I thought it might take more uh, movement points to fly over the higher spiky bits, but... Anyway. Yeah. 44 damage. We don't even need to use that Dark Sword. And look, we're still getting 50 experience per kill. I don't think I'm overleveled, guys. Even if it feels like we're overpowered. I know we could get more level ups if we wanted. Hey, Gaian! Look at that. Good amount of damage. Almost as much as, as uh, Roos there.
And yeah, I know, having two archers would make it a little bit easier to kill those Hell Riders, but it's not necessary. Just look at this. Who need who needs archers when you've got super paladins with Valkyries? That can just one-shot anything. Level 13, HP 1, attack 1, defense 1, quickness 1. Yeah, I have felt like ever since level 10, that's more likely. I haven't seen a lot of 2s past level 10, basically. Fortunately, Kashing is pretty slow on agility, so he's going to go last a lot. I guess I could have given him the quick ring, but I felt like a little bit more power was more important. And yeah, in case you're wondering, this is traditionally the split between characters that join promoted and characters that you can level up higher than 10 before you promote. That's 10 more levels of stats that almost always turns into a better character than having a pre-promoted kind of lowered maximum stats. Oh, we gave them another good freeze target. Well, I'm not grouping up very effectively or very smartly, I guess, but... We're also at the point in the game where I don't have to worry about it too, too much. Now, to be fair, the Chimeras and Wyverns can still deal a lot of damage. So, um... Now, Blue will probably get attacked by the boss if he stands here, but it is pretty important to kill the Demon Master quickly, so... Let's get rid of that guy. Critical hit! Exactly enough damage. No XP, sadly. All right, stock. I'm going to put him here and shoot this one. Maybe I should have shot the other wyvern, actually. Yeah, I probably should have shot the one that was further away. I was trying to set it up for, like, some magical area of effect. But then I'm like, wait, he'll probably just kill him in one shot. And yeah, wyvern's still giving us 50 XP. Um, we go after the priests. Sure. The boss is going to attack someone no matter what we do. Don't forget, he's got basically Blaze 3 for free, so... You can count on that. Level 13 bird. HP 1 defense... something? Maybe 2? I don't know. Luckily, Mayfair keeps going at a good time. So she's able to cast her aura before any of the units have moved. So that all the group is nice together. And although we're getting hit by Freeze 3s, we're just healing it up immediately, so... So that's nice. And it'll help her get some level ups too. Alright, Guyan. Let's finish this bird uh this bird. This bishop off. That way he can't heal himself. And um Still good experience. Great. I love it. And it also prevents us from grouping up too much. So my, my wizards aren't getting any great use on this map. The enemies don't seem to group up quite enough for my wizards. Like, it, it, it really depends on the game you're playing. Because I think in some Shining Forces, specifically Shining Force 2, there seem to be a lot of enemies that often all lined up in a, in a row or in a group. So having that area of effect magic like Bolt 2 was really, really good. But in this game, I mean, it happens sometimes. But it's... I'm pretty infrequent. Alright, we're just gonna avoid... We're gonna avoid the blaze, basically, there. I could have attacked, but I chose not to. We're gonna put Domingo over here. Um... So... I think the wyverns are probably resistant to fire and ice. Because they, they definitely breathe ice breath, which does a lot of damage. I mean, we could try to go for the Cheeky Diesel. Cheeky! Wyvern's soul was stolen. Alright, Domingo. Stealing a kill in there. Look at that. So we're making a very nice uh, crisscross. He decides... See, this is it. In in the past, the bosses really like going after your, your mages, and especially Domingo, so... That's, that's, that's classic. I'm surprised he didn't attack him with his double turn. Anyway, Claude's got enough defense to not be too scared. Although, if this guy starts getting double attacks the way uh, the last boss did, that'll be rough. He, he, not just, like, two turns, but two attacks in a turn. 
All right, Yisha. Can we start attacking now? Can we just kill the boss? Probably. It would be nice to kill the, the Chimeras, but I just want to get this over before it's a long episode. Now, I'm almost positive the boss will be immune to Diesel, so forget that plan. But, all right, he's probably immune to slow as well. The last time we tried it, it didn't work on a boss. But it would be awesome if it did work. So I will try it one more time. I think I just I think they're immune, but oh yeah, never mind. It looked like the animation worked, which it did, but then it didn't actually click in. I think that might be how you can tell. Like if the animation doesn't play, then the enemy like it missed kind of thing. Like when Diesel doesn't play the 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 Reaper animation, you just missed and try again. Maybe it'll work next time. But if the animation plays and it doesn't affect them, then they're just immune, and you can't really miss because you can't hit them anyway. Anyway, that's that's kind of how I think this this works. All right, so Gapel, pretty tough. He looks pretty cool. I haven't really fought him yet. You know, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking about this guy and you know walking around him, but never actually fought him. I wonder if sleep would work. <laughs> Speaking of things that I'm sure will never work, but let's just see the the spell animation. Unaffected by sleep. I'm sorry, everybody. I, I know I should just attack him. <laughs> but I, I got all these fancy spells I never get to show off. And I just tried to argue that I should keep all my wizards around, so... Oh, level 13. Uh, HP 1, attack 2, defense 2, quickness 1. Hey, I think I made the right choice keeping stock around. Look at that. That was a good level up. That's what I need to see. Alright, there's only one person that's really injured right now. Well, no, no, there's two if you count, uh, Cloud. So, we're gonna do this, heal a bunch of people up. I like this boss in the sense that he's kind of close to where you start, so it's easy to get your whole team sort of on him, right? Level 13, MP1, attack 1, defense 2, very good level up for a healer. Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to surround him. And, uh, you know, keep healing people up rather than trickling them in one at a time. Gaian with a double attack. A total of 32 damage. Of course, there's a counter, but it only does two because Gaian is a tank. It took a while, but he is definitely one of the best tanks. Now, Roos is also very tanky. He's just not quite fast enough to get in there. Maybe I'll move Claude over. Well, no, no, no. Well, no, we're going to hold Claude there because I don't want the boss to move down next to Wendy. He could move over to Yisha, which would suck, but we also will probably kill him pretty soon. Pretty quickly here. Kashing! Yeah, you can block up so Wendy's a bit safer. And you've got a Halberd equipped, right? Yeah, you know what? 70 attack power is pretty respectable. It required one of the ultimate weapons and a power ring, but it's still pretty respectable. And then Apis doesn't need that kind of mumbo-jumbo. He, he can just throw a Valkyries at him. Apis, best paladin for life. Critical hit. I sure hope you had an inventory open. Pretty sure she... Yeah, all right. We got the axe. I like to think Apis is a girl's name. It just sounds like a girl's name to me, even though it's, it's definitely a boy centaur. Danton and the others taught you well. But you won't find Bazoo and Frabel, so e didn't we already kill Bazoo, though? Waldo has enhanced their strength. I guess maybe Bazoo just got teleported away. We'll meet again, kind of style. Well, then there'll be a more interesting challenge than you, fool. Blue, come on, let's go get him. Well, I guess that's that. Alright, so there you go. Even with, like, 15 minutes of inventory micro, we got through that. 30 minutes total. We do need to end the episode, though. So I'm going to end the episode here, and next time we're going to go talk to Waldo. We're getting real close to the end, though, so that's why we had our level grind. Makes sense, right? Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for... Are we fighting Waldo? It's probably for Bell or Bazoo, I suppose. We'll see. Hope you've enjoyed. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and all that.